Hello everyone. In today's video, I'm going to discuss uh, the lighting rig, the lighting setup that I have. I'm going to first go over what it looks like now, and I'm going to be changing it, or actually I should say improving on it, um, later on in the video. So I'll show you what I have now, and explain to you why I'm going to be changing things up a bit. Okay, so right now, the lighting rig consists of basically four units. There's one, two, three, four. Basically, two on each side, which they're four foot units, so that gives you eight feet and a few inches with the ends and everything. But anyway, um, that works really good when your plants are, you know, maybe six inches tall, because the higher up the light goes, the, the wider it broadcasts. It, basically, what I'm getting at is you can see here, these are some, uh, I think these are broccoli plants right here. So as you can see, I if you can see that very well, I don't know how, yeah, you can. See how they're leaning in? It's because they're stretching for the light, which that basically that elongates the stem, which is what you don't want, obviously. <clears throat> um, contrary to that, the one right next to it, if you can see that, it's growing straight up in the air. Why? Because it's directly below the bulb. I know this is bright. It's directly below the bulb. So when the plants are this small, you know, the uh, amount of light coming out this way is just not enough for them. They need to be right on top of the light when they're this size. When the, again, when the leaves are bigger. They, there's more surface area to absorb the sun, the, the sunlight or artificial light from these fluorescent bulbs. So they don't need to stretch because there's enough of a leaf system to absorb the, the, uh, the light's energy. And same thing, the peppers aren't as bad. Case in point, as you can see, these are growing pretty much straight up. They don't have much of a lean to them at all because you see how much bigger the leaves are than these. So they don't have to stretch as much because they're actually closer to the light because they're taller. I'm growing my seedlings, at least for the next three weeks in here, <coughs> having two, two sets of lights, there's two bulbs each, is not enough. The, the middle ones are okay, it's just the ends aren't. And you could say, well, why don't you just move this out? Well, if you move it out too far, then the light in the middle um, diminishes. So there's kind of a lose-lose a in that situation. So what I'm going to be doing is putting... I actually have two more of these shop lights. These are ones I actually bought. These are ones that I've salvaged and, and, and put a whole plug in and everything in. These ones that you can just buy from a store that have a plug and everything. Uh, anyway, so I actually have two more of these um, down here. I'll be putting one on this side and then one on, and one on this side. Basically, the way these are suspended are by chains here. Just kind of rigged them up with these screws. All I do is loop around. These are actually two one by twos. And as you see, there's a lot of play in them. This is actually nine feet long. These are only eight feet. These are also called finger join boards because as you see here, they're actually scrap pieces basically and they're finger joined together. So they're not really made to have any type of compression or tensile load. Alrighty, so this is the finished product. I mentioned before in my other video, I'm going from four lights to six lights, or I should say from four fixtures to six fixtures. There's three fixtures on each side, two bulbs each, so that's a total of 12 bulbs. That's a dozen bulbs. <coughs> They're all either 40 watt or 32 watt. These newer type units, they use 32 watt bulbs. These are the older style unit, they use the fatter, uh, I think they're called T4s. They're 40 watts. I believe these are T, T eight maybe. I'm not exactly sure, um, but that's basically what I have there. And I'll show you one of the things, the bulbs that I use. There are these here. The brand is irrelevant. So is the. Uh, let's get you to the English side. Actually, this one doesn't have English on it. I got the other one. Hold on. Okay, sorry. <laughs> you can't hear everything is in French as well. So basically these say natural light, 32 watt, 48 inch for any room, last eight, year, eight, eight years, that's irrelevant, but the size is T8. That just means that's just the size of the bulb. The bigger ones are T4, the smaller ones are T8. Um, so basically I'll go over, <coughs> basically the way it's set up is that these three are all, or I should say these six are all supported by two by fours these two by fours are around nine feet long you buy 10 foot ones you cut them down and that's how it fit into my room here now what i used to have here if you can remember is i had these i had one by twos i had them uh doubled up basically looked like something like this 
My grow room is actually made from 1x2s. The reason why is because I don't need anything to support a lot of weight. All it is is this lightweight, basically weighs nothing plastic. There's no load on it, there's no rain. I just need it to, to, to seal the room to keep the heat in. <clears throat> so these 1x2s work great for something like that. So basically, I was having four lights, or I should say two lights suspended from each of these, and it was really pulling it and sagging it down. Now with these 2x4s, I mean, they're not even set up correctly. Normally you put 2x4s on, on end, the, the, so the skinny side is, is the width, and then the taller side is that. But I mean, here, they're, they're, not, they're barely moving, and I mean, I don't have more than probably 10 pounds of light per, per each one. So there's three sets of lights, three rows, so naturally there's three 2x4s. <clears throat> what I did is I used to... Re I used to have this stuff used to the, the chain. This is just regular chain. I don't know, decorative chain, whatever you want to call it. You can get it from Home Depot or Lowe's or something. I used to actually have it wrapped up around the beam. However, by putting in these 2x4s, the chain, that the length that I had cut is not enough to wrap around to make the lights down low like this. So I thought, okay, well, I either have to replace the chain, add to it, or be smart about it. And basically, I have a bunch of these. These are little like S-hooks. And I, I put it in a screw. These are just drywall, drywall screws. That's what I had laying around here. It's irrelevant what type of screw you have. Basically, you screw it in and leave out maybe an eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch, three-eighths, something like that. And then the chain hooks right onto this. <clears throat> and this is the way I'm going to keep it. Even once the lights be, are raised up, I could loop this around. But this will make it a, a lot easier because I can set it to every single notch. And every notch is probably maybe a half an inch. There we go, like a half an inch. Some of the chains I have have smaller notches that are maybe three-eighths of an inch or a quarter. Um, but in any case, it gives me pretty much precise adjustment. I can have different ones, different levels. If I have some taller plants here and, and lower plants here, I can angle it by taking this chain and moving this one up and keeping this one lower. And then it'll be at an angle. Um, I find that a lot better as far as maneuverability and... and uh, trying to think what the word is to make it instead of having the two hooks attached to one center leader you, you don't have any adjustment it, it's basically hung and that's the way it's going to be <clears throat> i didn't like that so i made this up this side is exactly the same i mean it's quite tedious for putting in all these screws and now the screws as you see them they're pretty much lined up with each other and the reason being is because if you have one back here and one back here it's going to sway the light is going to either put it this way or put it closer. As you can see, these lights are fairly close to each other. This one here, the middle one, could be moved over just a tad, but um, you're, you're really not losing hardly any light. And the way that this is designed is that these are four foot bulbs, which means they will hold four, four um, flats. The flats, I think, are 11 inches across or something like that, 11 or 12 inches. So even though I have a little bit of space here kind of wasted, I, my, my trays will never be butted up to this because I'll be able to put four on this side and four on this side, which gives you a total of eight. <clears throat> right now, as you see, I have one, two, three, four, five. And you may say, well, why don't you have four and one? Well, I'll show you why. These plants here, I'll get back to the lighting rig in a second, but I wanted to emphasize, I don't know if you can see the, how bright it is. You see how low those bulbs are? They're within one inch of the top of those plants. I don't know if you can see it, there we go. And I mean, you can't lower it any more than that. And now one one downside of using my pop my popsicle stick stir stick method is you can't put these real low. However, when things germinate, they're not going to stay a quarter inch tall. They're going to grow a bit, and then they'll start putting on their true leaves, just like this broccoli here. And then in this one here, there's there's nothing coming up in this one except towards the back. Um, I have some Swiss chard, and that's just coming up. But once you know, if you're, the lower the light is, the more chance your plant will have to stay short and stubby which is pretty much what you want uh, across the board and now over here as i was saying these ones are my peppers and my tomatoes and they're a little bit higher because the plants are higher naturally um, you have like i said you have pretty precise um, adjustment with this but you're limited to the height of your plants if you have multiple flats of things some grow faster some grow slower you can only adjust it so much so you have to kind of give in sometimes like right now i'd love to have these down more on my tomatoes but if i lower this even put it at an angle it's going to start hitting some of these taller peppers that are in here that are growing really fast so i have to kind of just bite the bullet and hope that these all straighten out 
and they don't start stretching too much. None of them have their true leaves on yet. Again, these only came up a couple of days ago, so they're still in their infant stage. These are about two or so, these are actually three, three weeks old, I believe, from planting, but they've only been up maybe a week or so, and they're growing well. So anyway, <clears throat> Back to the top here, I didn't mean to get off on, on a tangent there, but I just wanted to show you how, how controllable these lights are and how low you can actually put them. And uh, all the plugs, like I said, the, the shop lights that you can buy, they come pre-wired. These here were actually wired, these are actually from my barn, and they were all run in a series and just attach one after another from the ends or actually i think it was actually from one of these holes there was conduit and everything so it was, so it was all hardwired in so but i wanted to make it not hardwired i wanted to put a plug so you basically you just get yourself some 14 2 wire uh some wire nuts you just attach it to the to the nuts inside or to the uh the wire inside and then you just get yourself one of these i also have some you can see there's a black one down there it doesn't really matter they're plugs you feed it in you plug it in they do take up a lot more room than the factory built ones these you can put one after another these kind of take up two spots as you can see i couldn't put another one in there however which is why i have two light bars i have one controlling this set so if i ever need to i can bam shut that whole set right off and then on this side i have the other three and then i have this one that goes over there and all of these connect up to my timer now i used to have a really good timer Let's see, it's this one right here. This timer is excellent. This is fully programmable, digital, but what was great about it is it had two outlets that could be separately controlled, um, separate programming for each one, which is really great when I wanted to have one with my heater, I wanted the heater to run a certain amount of time, or, I, or, I, or for this scenario here, is if you want one set of lights on for say 16 hours, the other set on for 10 hours, depending on what you're growing, you could do that. But this one kind of kicked the bucket uh, it worked a few weeks ago, but then it just stopped and I couldn't figure out why I mean I'm not an electrician uh, It's not that there's a battery inside it or anything and Unfortunately, I haven't been able to find this kind at the hardware store that I looked so it's it's a woods brand So if there's anybody out there knows where you can pick one of these up in Ontario or like a home hardware or whatever Let me know in any case. So what I did basically is I have this This is the main feeder line coming into a T. There's a three Point T. This goes over to my heater and as well as goes into my heating mat when I have that and I also have like a radio plugged into this or whatever. It's plenty of power for that. Plenty of uh, strong enough wire. Now this is a digital timer. This feeds like again these six lights. So basically in the morning I have it turn on. They all fire up and at night time at 10 o'clock they all turn off. And right now I have them on I think a 15 hour daylight schedule they come on at seven o'clock and they go off at ten o'clock <clears throat> and i haven't seen any issues with that i mean during during uh, the summertime you know you don't necessarily get 16 hours of sunlight i mean when you have the, the height of height of summer in the middle of june or the end of june you may get close to that but uh i've, I've done this in the past as far as this amount of lighting and uh this amount of light and it's worked out fine for me so anyway that's basically the rig um, I didn't go over the supports or anything. Basically, these are just two by fours going onto this bench that I made. Um, basically, pretty sim pretty simple. You could make this this bench out of two by fours with some plywood. However, you could even have two different levels if you want that. But this is what I came up with using recycled wood, uh, the benches, and then this I just bought, of course, today. So anyway, that's the overview of the lighting rig. I'll try to back up here for you. So basically, I went from four fixtures to six fixtures. So I increased it by 50 percent um or i should say 150 percent i guess so i went from uh yeah i went from 8 to 12 so it was an increase by by uh by half but in any case the the bulbs that i'm using there's a variety there's cool bulbs there's warm bulbs there's daylight bulbs and there's actually grow light grow bulbs that you can use for like your aquarium or whatever that's what they that's what they sell them for or sell them market them as but anyway i haven't necessarily found a, a difference using each different type i should do an experiment maybe the next winter i'll do an experiment to see exactly what type of lights do better but for the most part your regular fluorescent tubes will do just fine so thanks for watching if you have any further questions on how i have this set up or uh how i went about doing it feel free to leave it in the comments below or send me a message and i'll be sure to answer that thanks for watching and stay tuned 
with this more light rig, 50% more light, we're going to be pumping out some big time plants. So I, I can I can tell now. And then as they grow, just raise them up, and this is how it'll stay. Thanks for watching.